What's up guys, Fahrenheit here back with another video. In this video, I want to follow up on the last video I did about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Being positive about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. What are, you, what are the things that I liked about the game and, you know, I wanted to know what you guys liked about the game. This video, I'm going to talk about what bothers me about the game. What really grinds my gears about the game. And it really all boils down to presentation with this game. That's really the biggest crime that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite commits is the presentation is so poor in a lot of ways. And pretty much everything I'm going to mention is going to be based on presentation. Everything except maybe one thing. So it's presentation. It's a layered topic. So I'm going to go through each of the things that really bug me about the game up to this point. Now, I'm kind of just shooting from the hip here. I'm not reading from a script or anything. I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. So I might ramble a little bit. So just kind of bear with me. I'm going to try and keep it as concise as I can. Now, with this game, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, the presentation is really important. Like with any game, presentation is, is the, is, leaves a lasting impression on you, as they say. Presentation is key. So, when you have bad presentation, you, it leaves a bad impression on people. Now, it, one of the ways that this game does that, to me, one of the, one of the main things, and I'm going to start small and then build up to the bigger issues I have with the game. So it's gonna, it might sound kind of nitpicky at first, but it all kind of compiles onto itself. It, it's all accumulative. So I'm gonna start small, I'm gonna build up. So one of the smaller things, but still one of the things that irked me was the, the HUD. Like the super meters, the health meters, things like that, right? Something about them, just, it just, it doesn't leave a good impression on me. You know, it's, it, it looked cheap, right? And that's one of the issues that the game has. It just looks cheap and maybe unfinished, unpolished in a lot of places, right? Which is a, is poor presentation. It leaves a bad impression. And that is, to me, seen in the HUDs and like the super meters and stuff like that. And I can't really put my finger on what it is about them I don't like, right? They should, in theory, they should look cool, right? You got like, I think they have like crystals on them and the light and special effects and stuff. But for some reason, they remind me of like a mobile game or something like that, which like a freemium game. And I'm, I wonder if maybe... Capcom did that intentionally when they designed some of the, the the HUD, you know, because we live in an age where people are used to playing freemium games on their mobile devices and they want to appeal to maybe a broader audience. So they designed the HUD with that in mind. I don't know, but I don't personally like it. I don't really feel like it's going to it's going to do any justice for this game. Now, moving on from that, right, we're going to get into something that is, I think, more of an issue right some still might look at it as nitpicking but i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna explain the character select screen the character select screen i was actually shocked when i saw the character select screen i was like this looks hideous <laughs> it looks awful right it's just it's so it's so basic bitch like it's just it's from from what i remember right i remember it it was like some still uh images of the characters and then some nondescript background and then like the character boxes uh, one side highlighted in red one side highlighted in blue and it's just like wow like this is it now if you go back and you look at like you could go back and look at any other fighting game i've i've seen some ex obscure anime fighting games that nobody even knows about probably that have cooler character select screens and better presentation than this game does there was this game i played a demo of called blade arcus i wonder if, i don't even know you half you guys might not even know what that is but i remember looking at it, i'm like actually this this looks pretty cool i have the character select screen and everything the music i'm like okay right I've, but then you can you can even go back if you want to keep it in the same uh in the same um with the same license keeping it with the same license look at marvel vs. capcom 3 right one of the things that i really liked about that game in terms of its presentation was the character select screen it had it was like uh if i remember correctly like a comic book it's almost like an open comic book and it had like the art cards representing the characters that was perfect for because it the concept of a comic book in a game where you have marvel characters in it that's awesome and it was well executed that's a very cool idea very inspired right what happened to that where is that kind of inspiration that kind of art design I think one of the biggest issues people have had with the game is the presentation of the characters themselves, right? How the characters look. 
especially with this game trying to play off on a more cinematic thing you know we've got a whole lot of cinematic stuff going on in fighting games these days you know they want to really push the cinematic aspect like the story mode and stuff but the problem is unlike a game like say injustice 2 right where the character models look immaculate and therefore they look great in cinematic situations this game does not because the character models look kind of poor right it's just another aspect of of, of the poor quality the poor presentation see the thing for me with this game and the characters is Marvel vs capcom infinite is the most recent game in which these characters are being represented so in theory they should look better in this game than they have in any game that came prior to it right but then let's look at chun li and mar vs capcom infinite now look at chun li from street fighter 5 one of them looks better than the other. <laughs> it doesn't matter which version of Chun-Li from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite you, you compare it against. It doesn't make a difference. Let's look at Dante and, and, and or, or Morgan from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Then look at Dante and Morgan from Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Right? Even if we use the promotional art, that still represents the in-game graphics pretty closely. Now, one of these games looks like a newer game than the other, and it's not the one that it should be. <laughs> It really, it literally looks like, as I looked at the character art, it looks like with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, they literally took Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and they just drained all of the art direction and polish from it and said, here you go, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. It's like, what the hell? It looks like definitively worse in this game. I don't, I was like, wow. I was off put by it. It's like, it just, they don't look nearly as cool. Now, again, now I'm, we're going to move on to the next thing right we're gonna move on to the next thing because it, it can like i said it all compiles on itself right now i'm gonna talk about the character roster which is another thing a lot of people have had issues with understandably now the roster especially on the capcom side is really leaving a lot to be desired it is basically just marvel versus capcom 3's roster but less <laughs> I, I think it's literally just the exact same characters, but just less of them, with the with the inclusion of X, who was a skin for Zero in Marvel's Capcom 3, and uh, Jetta. Those are two new characters, right? But other than them, it's just a recycled cast for the Capcom side. Now, here's the thing. This is why I said that it all compiles on, on itself, right? Now, if they were going to have nearly a completely recycled cast, at least if these were the best presented versions of each character that we've ever seen up to this point then it would be fine it, it would kind of it would kind of make things okay because at least it's the coolest looking chun li you've ever seen it's the coolest looking dante you've ever seen and you're just like wow it they really put a lot of quality into this roster even if even though it's recycled they took the recycled roster and they made them look amazing they made in terms of the way they looked in terms of the way they moved it just looked all super awesome better than anything you've ever seen up until this point but that's not the case they look worse in a lot of ways, as I've already mentioned, and that's what makes it so much worse, right? That's what m it multiplies this crime of presentation that Capcom is committing with this game, right? So those are really the issues I have with the game as far as the presentation goes. Now, moving on from that, the last thing I want to talk about actually isn't presentation, but it is roster-based and DLC-based. And that is what I believe is the day one DLC. Now, I don't know how you get it. It's either a pre-order bonus or you have to get a deluxe edition or what have you. But first of all, I don't agree with day one DLC. I think if it's day one, it should be in the game, period. Second of all, it's a fighting game. You shouldn't be locking characters away, especially not on day one. What the hell? But even with all that said, the characters that they're locking away as day one DLC or as pre-order bonuses or whatever are brand new characters. Brand new characters. Why do we buy new games? Why do we buy new games? Why do we buy new fighting games? Because we want new experiences. We want the new characters. We want the new music, stages, special attacks, the new functions. We want to experience this new game, the new content, to see how things can be reimagined, the old stuff be reimagined into something new. We, we want new experiences. And you're going to take the new characters, which is a big reason to buy a new fighting game, and you're going to lock them behind some paywall or whatever, or some additional prerequisite that you have to adhere to other than just buying the game. I mean, it's one thing if it was legacy characters, right? Dare, 
dare I say, if they came out with DLC where the next two characters on the Capcom side was Jin Saltime and Captain Commando, right? Because at least then it's not day one DLC and they're legacy characters. So you can go back and play as those characters in other games. That, so at least that way, it's not keeping a new experience from you. But to lock new characters away that have never been represented before, that is, there's no legitimate way to play as them in other any other way than to pay additional money for, for a new game to play as new characters, that's ridiculous to me. That is completely unacceptable. Capcom can kiss my ass as far as that's concerned. Straight up like that. Straight up like that. Nah. That's egregious. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So really what it all comes down to, as I mentioned before, it's presentation. That last stuff, that last thing I mentioned is more business model, but for the most part, other than that, it's really all presentation. And that's the biggest crime that Capcom commits is their lack of presentation. It's, it's poor, it's very poor, and it makes the game look bad. And on top of that, they've got these ugly DLC practices that they've already got going right out the gate. So that's my problem with this game. I, like I said, I might have rambled a bit there. You know, I, I guess I was, I was going off the cusp, just off the top of my head with some of the things in my mind like I just that just bothered me about this game. And I've been holding back. I haven't been talking about it at all, but I wanted to go ahead and just put a video together just talking about, you know, what it is about the game that's, that bugs me. That really just as a Capcom fan or someone who's grown up with Capcom, who's just frustrated with the things they've been doing lately, what I see and what's bothering me with this game that keeps me from buying it, objectively and subjectively. So... That's my take on it, guys. What do you guys think? Like, what bothers you with this game? You know, we, we were positive before. We tried to be positive before. What now? This is the other end of it. What grinds your gears with this game? Let me know in the comment section. I'm going to see you guys in the next video, man. This is, this is Fanheart signing out.